Hello, everyone. We have Abe Issa joining us for this episode, an entrepreneur in full and someone who's persisted through life, dedicated, committed, one of the hardest workers in the room, a big lesson he points on. And today, being the hardest worker in the room, diligent and, and right in your ways. So we go through his whole history. He has a fascinating background growing up in Beirut, a city in Lebanon, and it's just fascinating. Everything he's been through, the different ventures he's created, the fields he's been in, some being in renew- renewable energy, some being in finance, some in real estate. But you'll see he interweaves a lot of those careers in, in the sectors of the careers he's been in together through his life. It's really cool. Abe's a great guy. He can speak from experience and give insight where it's needed because he's lived the life of an entrepreneur. So we're going to get into everything that, business and more. So enjoy. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you soon. I have a dream. That's one small step for man. I am the greatest. You want something? Go get it. Period. Would be, you know, Abe, I appreciate you coming on to talk. Obviously, it's it's been a little little time coming, but we got it down here and uh the first thing I wanted to ask is the history of like, in the context for people listening of what Beirut, cause it's a city in Lebanon. Like what was the, what was the history of what was going on at the time when you grew up there? Because it was such like a, it seemed like a war torn area or like a lot of turmoil at the time and growing up in that's not easy, but can you give us the context for those who don't understand? Yeah, absolutely. You know, at one point it was, it was called the Paris of the Middle East, that side of the world. So an unbelievable place. It's beautiful. It's on the Mediterranean Sea. There's mountains. You can ski. You can go to the beach. Great food. Great nightlife. Um, which, yeah, so the Civil War started in the mid-70s and it went all the way until 1990. We left and immigrated over in the 80s. But the root cause of what created it was there was a lot of insecurity. So I don't think the, uh, the government, the military able to protect the people. So I think the different religious groups went out and they formed their own militias and it created a big sectarian type government where the president of the country has to be a Maronite Christian. And then the speaker of the house has to be, you know, um, I don't know if it's a Shia or Sunni Muslim. And then same thing with the prime minister. So the sectarian government, um, you know, the whole issue came from insecurity and it just, and the government that was put in place has never worked, you know, it failed. So um, I remember as a kid growing up, seeing people in the streets, military men with machine guns in the street. I remember rockets exploding in the city and the building that we were living in shaking, waking up in the middle of the night. It was crazy. It was, it was unreal. And then um, we eventually immigrated over. My dad knew, some, knew someone in the state, and they were able to get us over. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a background on it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's incredible. Like, what, what was it like to grow up in such a, an environment? Like, what did that teach you? And, like, it's amazing that you were able to, to come to the States to be in, like, a better, safer spot and, like, kudos to your family to be able to get you over here, your dad and, and, and stuff. But what, what did that teach you during such a time? Um, like build your character and stuff. Um, I mean, it, it was, you know, I learned how to be enduring out of it. Um, I don't know. It toughens you up. You know, it toughens you up. You're not, you're not afraid of anything after experiencing and living through something like that, you know? So not, not a lot phased me growing up after I left and I grew up when we moved to Texas I grew up uh, in not so great of a neighborhood you know it wasn't like a middle class or a wealthy community it was it was tough we grew up in a uh, in an all bills paid part of Fort Worth um, but it didn't save me you know I was like tough I was hardened from seeing what I saw as a child in Beirut yeah I mean and you're in a field now where uh having tough skin is like required like in that being entrepreneurship. <laughs> yeah well 
what was one of the first ventures like you you got into was it early on or did, was it later in life where like after college after tcu it was like i just like the renewable energy field right after you went through finance and real estate i'm gonna just keep going through like the entrepreneurial type path or was it earlier on that you got some reps in the ring it was it was in like as a child like i had an innate quality in myself i think where i just i wanted to work hard i wanted to be the best at whatever whatever it was i was doing so i was fortunate enough in college to get an opportunity to work for a real estate investor developer my junior year in college and i crushed it knocked it out of the park working for them helped them build a huge company in a matter of two years so saw a lot of success in college that's when i actually started taking care of my family uh mom and dad wow. and siblings but um they yeah, worked all through college took 15 and 18 hours a semester worked 60 70 hours a week um, by the time i graduated i was promoted to vp of that real estate company um Stayed there for another year and a half, and eventually I went out on my own, started my own real estate ventures, did that until you know, the uh, the recession hit in 08. Um, and then I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do after that, because it was, it was tough to do real estate during that time. Mm -hmm. um, so six months later, I founded an energy efficiency company, and the idea for that came from a lot of clients asking from the real estate is asking about green insulation and energy efficiency and home improvement, things like that. So um, I started doing a lot of research at that time and realizing green was in the infancy stage. So we put together a different product mix, uh, energy efficiency heavy, started a business and it grew extremely fast. We had no idea what we were doing though, no clue what we were doing at the time. Um, made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. That's, that's the way you learn. Um, we tried to grow that company all over the country, construction crews, um, different types of home services, spray foam insulation, solar powered attic fans, LED lighting, uh, a little bit of solar, not, not that much at that time. And eventually that transitioned into another business that was a solar company. And then from a solar company, I, Started a smart home company, and um, you know now we're working on other clean energy ventures, EV space, uh, renewables. We're also working on our own uh, uh, project financing platform as well. Mm, what was the last part? Project financing platform. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I have a. I'll come back to that, but I wanted to ask. You didn't know much about like renewable energy but you knew about real estate did you have to bring someone on your team who was adept in that or did you have to just learn it on your own and then like build a company around that because it's no it's no easy thing like it's such a hard like i know people in it and it's 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 not easy right yeah no like it was all self-taught i had to learn everything on my own i think wow. that's why i made so many mistakes. i didn't i didn't have experts seasoned experts to bring in that that could say hey no, you do this correctly. You do this this way. No, you do this that way. I had no idea. Mm. You know, no idea. Yeah, you figure it out as you go. How, what were some exam like? What would you say is like a imprinted example of a mistake you made, where like it is the ultimate figure it out as you go uh, mindset and action. Oh ultimate example i don't i don't think i've cut an ultimate there was just so many different yeah. different things yeah I mean, we had to, i mean i had to learn how to run so many different departments whenever i bootstrap the first company in the energy efficiency space you know i had to learn how to be a project manager i had to learn how to be a call center guy you know i had to learn how to be a door-to-door -door guy um naturally i was a sales guy but then you know we had to add marketing to it finance there, there was a lot involved, you know, procurement, all that stuff, supply chain. So uh, nothing really stands out. Yeah, yeah. We're wearing many hats, basically. <laughs> yeah. 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 On, on that, though, um, I wanted to have maybe the lay person who doesn't understand solar energy that much. Can you explain, like, 
like what a what do solar panels do and like why is it why are smart homes ramping up in importance now yeah i mean it's pretty solar is pretty pretty simple i mean you're going to get sunlight from the sun that's absorbed into the panels right and then the uh, solar panels create electrical energy then you have in, inverters which is another component of the solar system that converts that energy into actual energy that the home can use and it's that the room meter and the smart meter tracks into the excess solar production that way you can get a credit for that bill smart home I mean, there's been a huge smart home explosion. Originally, it started off with people positioning it as more home security, home security monitoring. And then, you know, then the devices started getting connected. And then you started doing smart thermostats and, and water sensors and garage door openers, doorbell cameras, um, smart lighting. People love smart home for the convenience, you know, and you get savings from it. It's convenient. People feel safe. It's tangible, you can see it. Versus solar, solar sitting on your roof. With smart home, you are, you've got an app and you've got the devices in your home and you're using them mm-hmm. and see them. So, yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, and for, uh, since I'm in Austin, Texas, I, I went to the Gigafactory recently that's being built and Tesla's on my mind. We're seeing Elon Musk a lot. I mean, Solar City is a part of Tesla now. They're a huge renewable energy company tech company even like what do you see and i bring that up just for context of like it's happening everywhere and i'm even seeing it where i am geographically but like what do you see you know tesla's a big player in the space what do you see the happening in the renewable energy space and like with solar panels and um evs and stuff because that's your world and you can kind of see what's coming like what do you see at large happening well i mean it's already there's a lot of development happening now around storage you know, and batteries and, you know, Tesla was kind of like the first driver of that, you know, when he marketed the Tesla Powerwall, um, it took a while for storage to catch on because it's an expensive adder to the solar system. Um, so I think there's going to be more development, um, more growth on the, on the storage side, batteries, um, the EV space is obviously growing, right? There's a lot of, um, plans and the new infrastructure bills to help support EV adoption. I think it's going to continue to renewables. Um, what exactly? I'm not sure. I know solar is going to continue to grow. Um, I think the business last year, even during COVID grew 20%, 21% the end of the residential industry. Did. Um, wow. So solar will continue to grow. Uh, storage is growing tremendously right now. Smart home is going to continue to grow. No. Yeah, and for and for painting a picture, there's one little snippet. It's uh, Enviro Solar, um, Enviro Solar Power, the company you created. Uh, it had a growth rate of over thirty six thousand percent. Like that, I mean, it's kind of staggering to me. Like thirty six thousand percent. Like how do you how does that measurable? And like I can see now why it was hard to keep up with everything. Cause you guys yeah. just like build as you were going, but is that over the span of, of like a decade, a, like a year, like how much. That was, that was over a three year period. I mean, Enviro was, that yeah, was an innovator in the space and we had a fantastic sales team. You know, we had a great sales training program um, and we were one of the first, you know, and it started with the previous energy efficiency company that we were operating. And then whenever we transitioned over to solar, I mean, we were one of the first big players in the South. Um, and it grew fast. And with that growth, if you never grown a company at that level, or if you don't have leadership that has the experience of growing companies at that, at that scale, you just, I mean, you make a lot of mistakes. You know, there were a lot of things that we learned. Um, so it wasn't always oh, wow, we're growing. I mean, it was, we would grow, yeah, we would yeah. run into issues, right? We would grow, we would run into other issues. There's just a lot of things we didn't know. So, but uh, a lot of great experiences, man. Yeah, I can imagine. And I have a twofold of the same question. One, you know, is going to come, but I wanted to ask what, 
people, what you think about sales that most people might not, or might like disagree with because you're, you were in the thick of it. Like you experienced it with finance and then real estate and then making your own companies. But what is something you think strictly about sales that, that some people might um, disagree with, or like not even know of if they're not within your like day-to-day operations of being a salesperson? Man, if someone is interested, it doesn't matter who they are. There's always a way to negotiate a deal. There's always a way to create a deal. Nine out of 10 times. The only way that you shouldn't be able to make a deal is if someone is just not interested. And that's it. So, and that's something that the majority of salespeople in the country across all industries don't understand. They don't know. So that's it. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to think about that in my own life. Like it's so hard to pitch people that don't believe in what you're doing, but you think if there's an inkling of any sort that you can always find a way. But you've got to believe in it all tremendously. You've got to be passionate about it. You've got to be able to, to speak to it with conviction. Yeah. You know, you've got to be places that people have to believe that you believe that, you know, the credibility has to be there. Not just the organization that you're representing, but the credibility in yourself. And people know when they're talking to someone at a high level, they know when they're talking to someone that knows what they're doing, what they're talking about. So if you're positioned and you know enough and you're an expert, you're passionate, you've got conviction and you're creative and you know how to negotiate, you're probably going to work out a deal. That's good. Yeah, I like that added thing to it. And then on top of that, the duplicate of this is like, what's something you think that most people don't think at all or might disagree with at, at large too? Like something in, in your life personally. Something that people yeah. would disagree with. It. I, yeah, that you think. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, what is something that... Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't have. I don't have any. I don't have any. If I if I were to give you something you said to me the other day, where it was like, um, if you're able to do something today, then do it. Like basically, don't procrastinate on it. Um, I believe that's something you you talked on with me before, because you're a go getter. Like you're do it now. So you, th- you think that would apply to this? You've got to be a go getter. You've got to be a self starter. You've got to you've got to want to go got to have that push uh, a lot of people they like to procrastinate you know whatever it is they've got a task a project something they're working on and you know, they're building a company they're building an apartment they'll tend to push things on to the next day you know like their work day is done they're like all right these items are getting pushed on and they continue to push them on they compound and compound and compound you're all behind so you know whenever we were uh you know in any business that i've done that i've scaled Anytime that I was at my peak performance, I was getting everything done that I could possibly get done at that moment in time. I didn't push anything away. I wanted to be satisfied myself that I did everything that I could get done that day. Yeah, I like that. And, and for you, you have this uh, commonality of, of extremely diligent, committed and dedicated. Like, how do you how do you have the self-awareness to differentiate like when there might be moments of, I need to step away to have my body like be like recuperated or like I need to rest up or I need to push forward on something very specific because it has to get done maybe because I'm wearing many hats or like just because I have to do it. Like, how do you balance that? Well, you gotta, I mean, you've got to be able to, you've got to have an an out, right? Like you've got to, be able to participate in some type of activity outside of work, or you're going to burn out. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you work, if you're constantly working and you have nothing else, like there's no outlet, you're not you know, hiking, biking, exercising, doing something, right? If you're not getting, at least for me, if you don't have that activity going on, you start to build up a little bit of anxiety. You feel a little bit of anxiety at the end of the work day, you know, and your brain just never, it never shuts off. So, um, you've got to have some type of a way of balancing it. If you're going to crush it and work, and you're going to work 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week. There's got to be an outlet mm. or no. Yeah. Yeah. And yours, would you say is 
physical exertion, like exercise, stuff like that? For sure. I mean, I like to, I like to hike. I like to play golf. I like to get on a bike, mountain bike, road bike, hmm. exercise, and then do a little bit of cardio. You know, I mean, it's all, it's all nice, good stuff. I feel fine. I just need 30 minutes a day of an activity like that. And I feel rejuvenated. Yeah. Just get your mind off of it. That's, that's insightful coming from someone who works like X amount of hours per week, like you said, uh, but to revisit it, can you give context to where you're at with Enviro and then, you know, a new venture you're working on. And I'm really interested to hear about the fundraising platform you're creating, because I know of some startups who have like real estate um, platforms for raising money when it comes to homes or even like buying and selling homes or investing in homes like a stock market. But I have no idea what you're creating. So I'm interested to, to hear it. Yeah. Let's talk about, let's talk about the new venture. Let's talk yeah. about that. So it. it's, it's, it's exciting. So the, uh, the FinTech space is heating up, right? I mean, it's, it's a, it's a popular, popular space right now. High growth rate. There's a lot of high growth companies in the space. So, you know, in our, in the, in both the residential and commercial space, financing is a huge need for consumers, for business owners as well. Right. So, uh, there are a lot of great lending finance companies out there. Um, I don't feel like there's been one that's just absolutely gotten it right in this space. hundred percent. They're constant. They're learning also constantly. Uh, from evolving their business, but we're working on our own finance company to where we can finance consumers, business owners, and we've got some really, really strategic, unique products coming out that have never been done in the marketplace at all. So brand new stuff that's going to be a, a really nice differentiator hasn't been done. So um, working on that, hoping to have that up and going in the next six months. That takes a lot, a lot, a lot going on behind the scenes with that business. Um, so we'll see. I mean, hopefully I have an update for you on that by, by October, but that's going to be a huge deal when we get that up and going. Yeah, I see. So it's, it's, it's totally different in the FinTech. I was like associating it with, okay, this is real estate related it's stuff related to finance or fundraising with houses, but now it's like, no, it's totally different. It's financing for just small businesses and businesses in general, um, which homeowners. Oh, okay. In the, the clean energy space, all, oh. all clean energy related. Cause you're so, that's awesome. Cause you're so, you're so used to that space and you have the roots of finance that you're just kind of interweaving them with tech. Correct. Wow. And, and for someone who's like, I have people telling me, like, I want to start a business. Where do I start? I want to start a business. Where do I start? Like for you, you had to essentially root up something new and you've done it so many times before, like in a kind of bullet listed way, like what did you have to think through? Maybe you don't have to go through like the actual legalities of like file this, this, and this, but like, what did you have to think through to start something up like this again? This new, this new venture or just something in general? No, just, uh, you can say this venture, but apply it like generally. Uh, yeah, use it as an example. Use it as an example of like what you would go through in your mind. to like, I'm starting this new business. For, for me, I started this business because, you know, like it's, it's part of it. It's part of my background and what I've done. And yeah. From the experience of the last 10 years, right? So I know it. I know the business. I know the industry. I'm confident in it. I'm passionate about it. So I know it, I get it, you know, and I know what type of departments to build for the business. Now this time, this time around with what I'm doing, I know that I need to bring in a very sophisticated, strong, strong leadership team to run that, run and operate that business. And that's something that you know, we didn't do in any, in any venture before in the past. And then now with this, so we're talking about a tremendous amount of money here, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially billions of dollars in project financing annually, yearly. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of smart people in the, in the space. So build a leadership team. Um, we know and understand the business. I think a lot of people will start businesses and companies 
and they just they don't understand what they're really starting and what they're doing. You know, I've always started something that I I knew what I was doing. So. Yeah, that that's wise. I I see the best people in their craft. They always know the industry better than anyone. Like they they think about it all the time. So I, I I love that. And just so I get a grasp of the business itself, like where are you guys pulling the money from? Because you're essentially you're you're kind of like a bank. Like where, are you having investors put in money to then lend to other people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how are you approaching those investors who are going to be kind of uh you call it like, you know, LPs in a way, or like people that are fund the, the company itself. Yeah. You know, we're, we're approaching people, we're approaching investors that have the liquidity, that like the asset class, that like a safe, secure investment, the low default rate. Mm. So yeah, there's a lot of buyers out there for it. Yeah. And, uh, what would you give to advice for someone who is, like I said, there's commonalities of, of all the people I talk to. I'm starting a business. Where do I start? Especially like soon to be graduates or like young individuals. What would you advise them? You know, you just gave the lessons of know your industry better than anyone else. Build a good leadership team. You know, culture and people are important. What is something you would say to someone just starting off that, you know, maybe you wish you knew or they should just know as they venture into the unknown? I would just say, man, like be the hardest worker in the room. Always be willing to learn. Always be willing to learn. Learn from your mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Learn from them. Hmm. But work hard, you know, and be passionate about what you do. That's it. That's good. That's good. And I would love to know if there's anything top of mind that's been like ruminating recently with realizations or anything you want to speak on because I like to give guests the the room to speak on stuff because i'm always the one asking the questions if you wanted to just like rattle something off or just or speak on something unscripted um as everything was here but i did was the one asking questions you can do it now i'd love to give you the the stage to do it no i'm, I'm just saying like looking looking back at everything that i've done and in my career if things would have been done properly and correctly because we were a pioneer in the space. We were one of the, we were one of the first guys we would have, you know, we would have created another solar city. You know, we would have been probably top two, top three largest clean energy companies in the country residentially. So, um, you know, I know what to do now. I know how to build a team leadership. So we'll see. Yeah. You're confident in your approach and, and like that, as they say, it's like, uh, if you were to be dropped on an Island, you can kind of reproduce what you've already built on another Island, just cause you have the mindset and like the, the tools to understand how to do it again. basically. Exactly. Yeah. Well, good. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how, how it pans out. Um, description stuff will be in the, in the, in the footnotes and all of that. So you can, People can follow you and what you're doing. I can keep up to date, but I'm, I'm appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thank you, Abe. Seriously. Absolutely.